Welcome to the channel, The Soul of an Artist, and this edition of Book Talk. I'm Dr. Ralph Basui Watkins, a scholar with the camera, and thanks again for joining me to talk about books that inspire us as photographers, especially or specifically in creatives in general. And I want to start with a quote from a book that I've reviewed in another um, edition of Book Talk, Committed to the Image, Contemporary Black Photographers. And I want to start with a quote out of this book from Kwame Braithwaite. And Kwame Braithwaite is a, a photographer now, is around in his, in his 80s. And, um, but in this book, he has a quote. And in the book, um, Good of the Image, each photographer um, submitted two images for the exhibition. And they also gave a quote about how they understood the work that they do. And I want to read this quote before I get to the book I'm going to actually review today or share with you. Listen to what Mr. Braithwaite said about how he understood that which he does as an African-American photographer. He says, while earning a living as a fashion and entertainment photographer, my primary interest has been in recording the history of the African and African-American struggles for liberation and equality. He says, my photos have been used to spread the black is beautiful theme throughout the U.S. and Africa. And that brings us to the book today. The book that we're going to review is Kwame Braithwaite's book, Black is Beautiful, published in 2019 by Aperture. And the beauty of this book has several interesting component, components. Number one, of course, the images. The images speak to a period from the late 1950s through the late 1960s. Tells the story of, of, of the Bronx in New York City and the area in which Mr. Braithwaite did his work. But then the other beautiful part of this book is that Mr. Braithwaite tells his own story. As I said, the book was published, he's 81 years old. And then throughout the images, the story of that time is weaved by the writer of the book. And then of course, quotes from the great Deborah Willis. Let, 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 let me start once again by, by reading what Mr. Braithwaite says, because the preface of the book is written by Kwame Braithwaite himself. And listen to what he says. I've been called the keeper of the images. Listen to what he says. My task has been to document the creative powers throughout the diaspora. He says, I was blessed to be a part of an art scene at a time when art and politics and especially music converged. That's something important about this book. He understood that the, the, there, there was this convergence of art, politics, and music. As an artist, you don't do your art alone. You do your art in community, in a community of artists, and in a certain time period. And in every time period, we need to link those three components. Arts, politics, and music. Listen to what he says. He says, seeing the images of Emmett Till in 1955 was a turning point in our lives. With photography as my medium of choice, I became an artist activist. He says, I co-founded the African Jazz Art Society and studios with my brother. It was an ode to our love of jazz and the teachings of the great Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Listen to what he says. He says, black is beautiful was my directive. It was a time when people were protesting injustices related to race, class, and human rights around the globe. I focus on perfecting my craft. Don't miss that. I focus on perfecting my craft. What you see in his work was, he was committed to the craft of photography. If you're going to be a great photographer, you must be committed to the craft of perfecting and improving your work. Don't just post images on Facebook or Instagram or, or Twitter or Flickr and just want folks, oh, nice image, great shot. You want people to help critique and grow your work. And you grow your work and you become a better photographer by studying photographers who've done great work and then be involved in a community of photographers who can critique your work and push you to become the best artist you can become. You must perfect the craft. Listen to what he says. I focus on perfecting my craft so that I could use my gift 
to inspire thought, relay ideas, and tell stories of our struggle, our work, and our liberation. This is a self-portrait he took in 1964 of himself. But throughout the book, what you find is the intersections he talks about, images of, of jazz artists and, the, and that setting of them doing what they're doing, doing the, the work of liberation, showing how these intersections occurred. I, I love the image of, of the little boy uh, poised by the James Brown uh, uh, advertisement uh, banner here. It's James Brown, you know, he, he was such a liberated thinking when, you know, you know he, he talked about, you know, how beautiful it is to be black and that black is beautiful and say it loud, I'm black and I am proud. Another part of the book, he talks about, you know, economics, being a disciple of, of, of Marcus Mosiah Garvey and, and Garveyism. It talked about us freeing ourselves, us being part of a liberative community that set ourselves free. God was clear that you can't expect your oppressor to set you free. Why would your oppressor set you free? Why would those who have been produced in institutions that have oppressed us, then we think those institutions can set us free? We must set ourselves free. So it said, think black and buy black. He said they were calling themselves African and black long before those terms were even invoked, meaning um, uh, Kwame Brethwaite and his, his colleagues images of, of posters of what was going on um, during, during that era where you see us celebrating um, album covers. The, the beautiful, he, they also had, they had models, they engaged models, they had a studio, they had, uh, they, they, they supported the, uh, a live plays. But they, they had a space where we as a people could come and put our beauty on display. And when you capture something in a, in a photograph, you're celebrating its beauty. You're saying it matters. It, you're saying we see you. We see you, African American. You count. You're black, and you're bold, and you're beautiful. You think about this. We had to. We had to actually say say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud because we have been we have been taught that that we weren't going. We, we shouldn't say it, and we sure weren't proud. We had to say black is beautiful. And we still have to say it as we're still crying right now that black lives matter. And this book and this work is a precursor to what we see happening in our culture today, that black lives matter. Let me read this quote from Deborah Willis and then we're out of here. Deborah Willis says, the great historian of photography, the great photographer, the great Dr. Deborah Willis, Deborah Willis, she says, black is beautiful then and now. Looking at Braithwaite's photographs today, helps the contemporary viewer imagine an explosive period of how it affected communities worldwide. Black is beautiful then, and black is beautiful now. Whatever age in which you live, you're called to celebrate that who we are. You're called to capture the images and tell the stories of your time in conversation with your community and other artists in your community that spans the arts. You were created by the creator, the beautiful you that you are, to create that which is beautiful. Let me encourage you to go and create something beautiful. If something here has inspired you and you think it might bless others, please share the content. Please subscribe. We create videos each and every week just for you. We believe God's called us to teach, inspire, and mentor you. To do that which the Creator created you to create. I'm Dr. Ralph Basui Watkins, a scholar with a camera. And let me say it one more time before we end. Go, go my brother, go my sister, and create something beautiful. God bless, thanks for watching, and I'm out, see ya. <laughs>